Hello guys, in this particular video we will learn low frequency response of CSCS that is FET FET in cascade mode multi-stage amplifier. Now whenever we will learn low frequency response that means we have to calculate the lower cutoff frequency after which I will get the constant value of gain which is required from the custom, customer aspects, customer point of view. Okay, so let's start with this particular circuit. <music> So let's start with this particular circuit. Uh, we have the two stages here in this particular screen. Input stage is consists of voltage divider bias along with this J fed J1, right? RD1 is drain resistance, RS1 is source resistance, which is bypassed with the capacitor CS1. Two coupling capacitors are placed in between the uh, first and second stage. One first is CS. To CC2 I can say coupling capacitor CC2 and input side I will be getting CC1 output side I will be getting CC3 so in all total I will be getting CC1 CC2 CC3 are coupling capacitors and in addition to that we will be getting CS1 and CS2 that are optional bypass capacitors right so if we want to have higher amount of gain we will take this bypass capacitors along with the RS1 and RS2 with a parallel combination of it right if we want the moderate gain if you want to less if you want to have less gain with a negative feedback effect then we will not use this CS1 and CS2 so we'll be having only three capacitances so number of capacitances and number of resistances will form number of RC circuits right so these RC circuits are basically responsible for your lower cutoff frequency right so let's start with the lower frequency response and here basically we have to calculate the lower cutoff frequency with the different kind of RC networks okay so this is your simple uh, two stage uh, circuit of having j fit right we will convert this particular circuit into your ac equivalent model so let's have a look at this yes so this is your ac equivalent model for low frequency analysis that's why i i kept cc1 cc2 cc3 cs1 cs2 kept as it is i have not yet shorted that right so because because of which i will be getting number of rc network and from which we will be getting the particular frequency required at the lower side okay so how many rc circuits will be getting let us discuss that first rc circuit will be getting from the input side of first stage right so that comprises of rs r signal rg1 cc1 okay so i will say that this rc circuit comprises of input of stage 1 <coughs> okay that forms formed by cc1 r signal and rg1 okay second rc network we will be getting from the bypass capacitor that is cs1 and rs1 okay so we will be saying that here we will be getting we'll just do namakaran as it is bypass of stage one so that we'll get to know that this is particularly rc circuit which is responsible for the second lower cutoff frequency right Sector is responsible with this particular RC circuit. So it comprises of RD1, RG2, and this CC2. Okay. So with this particular RC circuit, we'll be getting particular value of frequency after which we'll be getting the constant amount of voltage gain. Okay. So let's see. This is nothing but output of stage one. And in that CC2, then will say rg2 and rd1 these three parameters are important three passive circuit three passive components are responsible bypass capacitor stage one may i'll be having rs1 and cs1 are responsible okay let's move to the further part of rc circuit that is nothing but this one right so stage two ka bypass we will say that bypass of stage Two, okay and here responsible components are cs2 and rs2 okay e part that is fifth rc network will be getting from which we will be getting the fifth 
cut off frequency at the lower side and that is nothing but along with rd2 that is output resistance of the second stage and output capacitance at the second stage output coupling capacitance at the second stage and optional part is rl if rl is given we have to include the rl if rl is not given we don't have to include the rl very simple part so this is nothing but the output of stage 2 and responsible parameters responsible components are cc3 r d2 and rl okay so we'll see one by one and we'll calculate the frequency lower cut of frequency one by one for each and every rc circuit and then after that we will conclude the uh, concrete lower cut of frequency after the calculation of all five cut off frequencies okay so let's move to the next slide a part that is nothing but the input of stage one so input of stage one we will draw the particular circuit so that we'll get to know that from ac equivalent model this is particularly the circuit which is responsible for the first lower cut off frequency so i will draw the particular circuit here this is your r signal this is capacitor and this is your resistance gate resistance which is of very high value rg1 both resistance are connected to ground and in between we have coupling capacitor first coupling capacitor okay so let's say that this is vy and this is vx right as we have done the analysis of simple rc circuit we have got that the frequency fl is equal to 1 upon 2 pi r into c question arises what is r and what is c simple c thing is c is nothing but cc1 over here and r is nothing but r is nothing but the addition of the r signal and rg1 that is nothing but the series combination of these resistances okay so this is nothing but r signal plus rg1 okay now we'll move towards the next part of rc circuit where we will be getting another lower cut off frequency in the first part we have got that fl i'll name this as fl1 so that we'll can will avoid the confusion fl1 we have got 1 upon 2 pi rc by putting the value of r is equal to r signal plus rg1 and c is equal to cc1 we'll get to know that what is the value of fl1 okay then we'll move towards the b part that b part is nothing but we can say that it's nothing but bypass of stage one okay these namakarans are only to understand the fact that there these rc networks are situated okay so i'll redraw this particular circuit and it is at the emitter side here i can say this is your gm1 vgs1 okay and here it is your resistance r s1 and i can say this is your capacitance c s1 okay as far as analysis is concerned we can say that the resistance we are calculating by just looking from the capacitor side as we are saying that if we are looking from the capacitor side in a part we'll be getting r signal and rg1 are in series that's why we have got that value r is equal to r signal plus rg1 right now simply if we go through this particular open circuit of cs1 and we'll calculate the value of rs1 then that r will become not only rs1 rather that will become rs1 in parallel with 1 upon gm1 and that is nothing but your resistance r which is responsible to calculate the value of lower cut off frequency for this particular rc network okay so we will say that we have already got fl2 is equal to 1 upon 2 pi rc from the rc circuit analysis itself and c is nothing but cs1 over here and just now we have calculated the value of r is equal to rs1 in parallel with 1 upon gm1 question arises in your mind that how i can uh, say that r is equal to rs1 parallel 1 upon gm1 here i'll just give you a trick you have to solve of your own how to calculate the value of r is equal to rs1 parallel 1 upon gm what we'll have to do we'll have to apply two theorems right 
So we have done your prerequisite part in a BWE, right? You have to apply the Thevenin's theorem, you have to apply the Norton's theorem, right? And then we have to move through the part of RTH. As we have dependent parameter, dependent source over here, we cannot write directly the value of this particular R as RS1 or RTH directly, right? So rather than that, we first calculate the value of VTH, then we'll calculate the value of ISC that is from Norton's the current, and then we will be getting the value of RTH from that particular ratio of VTH and ISC. This is how you have to calculate the value of R, okay? So whatever value you will be getting of RTH, that is nothing but one upon GM1 that will be getting. And that one upon GM1, if you connect it with RS1 in parallel, then whatever value you will be getting, that will be in front of, that is in front of you, right? So RS1 parallel one upon GM1, this is how you have to calculate, okay? So as far as these two circuits and these two frequencies are concerned, it is very clear to you all, okay? I'm assuming that you have got it, right? Let's move further to have the next part that is output of stage one and here at the output of stage one the cc2 rd1 and rg2 these two resistances and one capacitance is responsible to calculate the value of fl okay so i'll draw this particular circuit so very simple circuit to understand this is also same as that of your input side of stage one. Just I'll changing the namakaran instead of R signal, I'll be having RD1 and instead of RG1, I'll be having RG2 over here, okay? This is CC2 instead of CC1 and here we'll be getting the value of FL. Now just pause your screen and just try to calculate what will be the value of FL3 by just calculating the value of R and C, okay? Here we will be getting the value of FL3 is equal to one upon two pi R into C, whereas C is equal to CC2 and R is equal to RD1 plus RG2. As far as uh, output stage one RC circuit is concerned, we have got FL3 is equal to one upon two pi RC, where R is this, 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 and C is this, 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 simple. So let's move to the D part. That D part is nothing but bypass of stage two. So our namakaran for that particular RC circuit is bypass of stage two, okay? So from the circuit point of view, this is your RS2 and this is your CS2 and as I said earlier by just playing with Thevenin's theorem and Norton's theorem we have to calculate what is the value of R okay this is your GM2 VGS2 okay and this RS2 and CS2 connected to ground we have to calculate the value of R, we have to calculate the value of C and then putting the value of R and C in 1 upon 2 pi RC will get the value of lower cutoff frequency. Simple. So just pause this particular video and calculate the value of FL4. Try to calculate what will be the value of R using Thevenin's and Norton's theorem, right? And then commit to me. So here we will be getting R is equal to RS2 parallel 1 upon GM2, okay? So I can say that this FL4 is equal to 1 upon 2 pi RC, where R is equal to RS2 in parallel with 1 upon GM2, okay? Similarly, I can say that C is equal to R capacitor, that is CS2, right? So D part is over where we have got the value of FL4. I hope you, are, you all are clear with the C and D part, A and B as well. And then we will move towards the last part, last but not the least, that is nothing but your output stage, output of stage two, okay? Output of stage two circuit is comprises of your output resistance that is RD2 and your output coupling capacitor CC3 and optional resistance if it is given that is nothing but the RL okay so we'll draw this particular circuit 
will fatafat draw this circuit rd2 and this resistance rl if it is optional if rl is not given straight forward directly r is equal to rd2 right this is cc3 ultimately your value of fl5 calculate the value of fl5 pause your screen and come to me fl5 is equal to 1 upon 2 pi rc okay where r is equal to the addition of rd2 and rl right c is equal to cc3 okay so this is how we have calculated the value of fl5 up till now we have calculated the value of fl1 fl2 fl3 fl4 fl5 now question arises if i am using this complete circuit as a multi-stage amplifier we are using simultaneously with only one frequency right so what particular frequency i have to carry as your lower cutoff frequency that is one of the question in my mind right and i can solve this question by saying that your lower cutoff frequency is nothing but the maximum value out of all five values i have calculated from all the rc circuit so i can say that sorry i can say that fl1 fl2 comma fl3 comma fl4 comma fl5 right out of which what is the maximum value i will consider it as fl that is lower cutoff frequency let us take an example that we have fl1 is equal to 20 hertz right fl2 is equal to 50 hertz right fl3 is equal to 100 hertz right fl4 we have calculated let's say fl4 we have got that is 10 hertz and fl5 we have got that is 400 hertz okay now out of which which one is maximum value that is nothing but fl5 so i can say that this fl5 is nothing but the value of fl which is treated as lower cutoff frequency for the entire circuitry to work this circuit as an amplifier okay so up till now we have learned how to calculate the all frequencies related to all the rc circuit in my multi-stage amplifier and out of all the frequencies how to calculate how to get the particular concrete value of your lower cutoff frequency and then we can draw the frequency response very easily okay so in the next video we will learn at the higher side of the frequency how to calculate the particular cutoff frequency for my multi-stage amplifier circuit so thank you very much for watching this video learn more and more edc with me with ikeda videos subscribe this particular channel of ikeda videos thank you very much